how it works. Show us how it's really done. All right, Garrett, that was awesome. Tell us about this whip you were using. Yeah, so this is a six and a half foot kangaroo hide bull whip, and it has a shot loaded core with a four plat belly, a cowhide bolster, and a 12 plat overlay, and we're gonna be making that today. All right, I don't know what most of those things mean, but it sounds cool and we're gonna learn about it. And so this kangaroo leather whip is made from this kangaroo leather strips, among some other things, right? Exactly. How do we get to this from a kangaroo hide? Yeah. So the biggest kangaroo hide you're ever gonna find is gonna be about this big. So that obviously is not gonna get very long, thin strips, so we have to cut circles around the circumference of the kangaroo hide in order to get the length of leather lace that we need. In order to do that, we make a uh, lace cutter, which makes it easy to cut the leather laces. All right, very cool. So we're going to spiral cut a kangaroo hide, and what we need to do is build the little mechanism that lets us do that. Exactly. Very cool. Here's the basic idea. We're going to take a piece of scrap wood, a couple of razor blades, and some hardware to assemble an adjustable lace cutter used for making strips of leather that can then be woven into a leather bowl whip. To get started on our lace cutter, what are the supplies that we need? We're gonna need uh, just a piece of scrap wood, some razor blades in order to actually cut the leather, some uh, wing nuts and some washers to kind of hold the entire uh, apparatus together, and we're gonna need some threaded rod. To start out, we need to cut a couple of pieces out of our board, and to decide the size of that, we're just gonna figure out what seems like it'll be easy to hold on to. See, so, yeah, to fit easily in my hand, to give me a good grip, do a little over two inches wide, I'll go for about two and a quarter, and then let's go for maybe five and a half. And then the second piece that we need to cut is actually going to sit on top of this one, and I think we're gonna try and make that length the same as this one's width. So we're just gonna keep that cut going for, I don't know, about inch and a quarter, inch and a half, something like that. It, it's, it's pretty loose. And then we just need it wide enough that we can fit our washer on top of it. Okay, we got briefly distracted by a sudden and fairly intense hailstorm, so I might still be a little bit wet because I felt I needed to run around in that. But we're back and it's time to continue with our build. So we've got our pieces measured out and we're gonna cut those out using a bandsaw. If you don't have a bandsaw, any other kind of saw will work pretty well. It's just convenient for what we're doing. So at this point, we've got our two pieces and let me know if I've got this right, the idea of how this is going to work. So we're planning to put the all thread right here. The blade is gonna come up somewhere around right here probably. Yeah, in our about, block. about that, yeah. And then our smaller block is going to have a sort of ellipse shaped hole cut into it. That's gonna be a sloppy drawing, but that hole will be cut out and it will fit around the all thread. So the all thread will go right here through this block and it'll be able to slide back and forth until we fix it down in place with the wing nut. So we've got 5 16 inch threaded rod, and what we want is for that rod to be in this block super tight, so it's never gonna come out. So we're gonna drill our hole using an even smaller drill bit. This is a 1 quarter inch drill bit. 1 quarter is 4 16 the rod is 5 16 That makes the rod a tiny bit larger than the drill bit, so it should be in there really tight. So we need to drill a hole into the block right here, and we need to drill a hole in the block right here. So to hold our razor blade in place, we're gonna cut a slit down through part of this block. We're not gonna go all the way down, we're not removing a piece, but we're just making a slot that our razor blade can fit into. We've got our bandsaw, and we've got this jig set up that will hopefully let us cut perfectly straight into our block. Now we don't want to cut the whole piece all the way off. How far down? About like that, you yeah. think? Yeah, a little over twice as much as the distance right there. Yep, yep, 
This mark was my first estimate of where to go. Garrett suggested we go a little bit farther than that because this is basically our hinge. It's gonna be tightening down right where we drilled our hole and the razor blade is gonna be secured above that. So if we've got a little bit more space, we've got a little bit more leverage against our hinge and we can clamp it down nice and really tight. Now at this point, if we put our all thread into this hole that we've drilled, it would be really stuck and we wouldn't really be able to squeeze this down to pinch our razor blade, would we? No. Okay, so we'll use a 5 16 inch drill bit to open up this front portion of the hole so that we can clamp down on the razor blade and it will move freely on the all thread rather than being locked onto it. So you can't see too well inside this hole to know what's going on, but here's the basic idea. We drilled a hole that goes all the way down through the block about like that. It's one quarter of an inch wide. But because we don't want the all thread to bind on this part, we then drilled a larger hole that goes wider than that one quarter inch. This is our 5 16 inch hole. So we have a wider hole through this portion and then it narrows down to one quarter inch for this portion. This means the all thread should bind really well to the wood here but float in the drill hole on this portion up here. It won't be attached to it, which is good because we need this to move just slightly in and out. So now this piece, we need to drill this long oval shaped hole sort of thing. And once again, this is something we don't want to bind to the all thread. We want it to be able to float and slide back and forth. So let's keep using the 5 16 inch drill bit for this. And what we're just gonna do is set up a sort of brace and then we're just gonna drill holes down in sequence, making sort of a tunnel through the wood. Then we'll clean it up with a file if we need to. All right, we've got that hole cut out. It seems to slide pretty nicely on our all thread without, it doesn't have a ton of wiggle room, it just, it moves pretty easily. Now we need some all thread. We need all thread cut to fit into this hole and into that one. All right, we can take our drill bit that fits down into the hole, we can measure. See if we do it through the block, we can see it should come to here to be level. Let's add on about half an inch to it. So we can just measure like that about how long we want this to go. So I like to just put a little bit of super glue inside the hole and that just helps to lock it in place even more. Extra binding, sounds like a plan. All right, so it can take a little bit of effort to get that hole to bind onto the edges of the all thread, but just push harder. Then you're gonna wanna use some pliers to grab onto the all thread and just twist it onto the wood. My arm's getting tired. You want me to take a turn? Yeah, I'm so strong. See, now someone else is doing the work. That's the key. Probably getting near the bottom there. All right, now we can slide this back and forth. We can cinch it down using our all thread and the wing nut, and it stays firmly in place. Brilliant. Same thing on the other side. So now we've got two adjustable points. We can loosen and tighten this piece of the wood. And then when we loosen this, our little block on the top just slides back and forth. What do we still need to do? We need to put a blade in it. We need to put a blade in it. I usually like to use about an inch of blade. So it has enough to nicely grip inside the... So I've got too much here. Yes, so we need to break off. That, that's what's nice about these blades is you can that's break excessive. them off to whatever size you want. All right. Sometimes razor blades go flying. Got our blade and we want to drop this down until most of it is hidden. We only want like a little bit kind of sticking up out of the top. That's maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe just over that, right? Yeah, the longest point about a quarter of an inch. All right, and now we just twist here on the side and that will pinch down on the blade, holding it firmly in place. We can adjust how thick we want our lace cutter to cut by moving this piece in and out. Garrett, is there anything else we want to do to this to really make it work just right? So there's one more optional thing that we can do. We can take off this corner here because as the leather is running by the lace cutter, sometimes it gets caught on this corner. So if we just cut this corner off at a 45 degree angle, it'll help to cut the leather a little smoother. Cool. That's beautiful. Can we test it out? Yep, time to test it out. Let's test it out. Why are we using kangaroo hide for our weight making? 
kangaroo hide is the strongest leather in existence. There's basically no other uh, leather that's going to be stronger than kangaroo hide. Okay, so we're going to be cutting around the circumference of the hide. But as you can see, it doesn't have a very, a very smooth outline around the hide. So what we're going to need to do is trim it so we have a very smooth curvature around the entire hide, which makes it easy to cut the lace. These little points, if we tried to pass that through our lace cutter, we can't really turn a sharp angle. We just need it to be like a smooth transition. So we're going to lose these little pointy bits on the edges. I'm taking off these legs because the legs are usually pretty stretchy and it's not the, the optimal leather to use. Do we want to try and get any lace off of this piece you just cut or do we want to so, go straight into the circle? We, we, need to, we want to keep these scraps because we'll use them for uh, little kind of rinky dink things along the way. But uh, So don't throw this away, but don't use it right now. Yeah, so we're not going to get very good lace out of that, but we can still get some good use out of it. Okay. Okay, so now that we have the kangaroo hide trimmed up, we have a very nice curve around the entire uh, kangaroo hide, we can now begin to uh, cut the lace. I like to cut lace on the corner of like a table or a workbench or something like that. So I have the kangaroo hide well braced on the table, but I can have the edge that I'm working with free and I don't have a table in my way. So to start cutting, we're just going to start on an edge here and we're going to take our blade and just kind of slowly push it in. And we're going to start just kind of a little bit of a taper and get wider and wider and wider until we reach the full width that we've had it set to. So right there. Now as we start cutting, it's really important to be holding the lace that you're pulling through and pulling at a little bit of an angle. Pulling at an angle helps to keep tension on the, the lace cutter and the blade so you get a more straight cut. You have to be careful with fresh blades because they cut through the leather like butter. And if you get excited, you'll just pull right through the leather and end your strand too early. Want to give it a try? Sure. I like to put my thumb kind of on top to help keep it flush. Do I do anything special when I get back to the starting point or do I just kind of keep circling through? Yeah, just kind of keep circling through. It'll, that, that, that kind of notch will get taken away when we resize the strand. So it feels like I could go a lot faster and you're recommending I really don't do that because I'll probably end up accidentally just pulling the blade right through the edge of the leather. Yeah. It actually kind of gets a little bit easier as the blade dulls just a little bit and you get a little bit of resistance. It makes it easier to go a little bit faster without worrying about cutting through your strand. It's better to err on the side of cutting a little bit too thick because we can make it smaller. But we can't make it bigger. Yeah, I think I've made it all the way around once. Very cool, very cool. This lace cutter seems like it is working really well. It's gliding through this leather super nicely and it's pretty easy to keep a uniform width on it. And that is something that is going to be very important as we try and turn this lace into a functional whip. In our next video, Garrett's gonna be showing us how to turn this leather lace into a fully functional whip. So make sure you come back for that. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber yet, just hit the bomb to get in the club. If you missed our last video or want to watch it again, just click up here at the top. Click down there if you wanna see what the internet thinks that you should watch next. That's it for now. Have fun, be safe, and see you tomorrow.